Hello YouTube world, my name is Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, The Teenage Movie Critic and welcome back to News Channel everybody. And today we're going to be doing another Celebration of Cinema review for a film that won Best Picture last year, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And to me, this is a pretty great film, uh, I would definitely say. Uh, for me, it was definitely a great film. It it's, has a lot of unique stuff when it comes to the performances, to the story, to the uh, pre to the usage of multiverse. And yeah, let's just go in and get started talking about it. And I think what I loved about this film when it comes to the story is that when you really think about it, it kind of does a lot of different things as it's a it's an Asian story that has Asian actors and it's somewhat making a story about accepting their daughter for being gay, going through a divorce and then going through taxes and your shopping stuff and all of this with Michelle Yao's character and then it translates to translates to multiverse. And then you get to see all these different kinds of universes and it does it in an interesting way. And to me, I believe that's just one of the most unique things that these two directors, the Daniels, they were able to craft something that was so unique with great performances, a, un um, um, a unique story, but also a unique take on the multiverse. Which, let's talk about each and every one of those things. And I think when it comes to the performances of this film, there are so many unique performances. Obviously, the main ones you got to talk about here are, of course, Michelle Yao and Keely Kwan. I'll I want to talk about Keely Kwan for a minute because, in a way, since this movie came out and since he won this award, and since he also appeared in Loki Season 2, Keely Kwan has had the best year of his life. Has had, has had the best two years of his life. He's making history, and hearing about his story from from his story started on a boat and a refugee camp and all that stuff. Him first showing up in Goonies and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, like all of that stuff is exciting. But even when it comes down to performance, it's actually pretty great. From when he's playing normal women to playing this heroic women where he can be serious, emotional, but also comedic but can also do the action as well and can be fun. In a way, he's kind of like the future Jackie Chan of this decade. I'm not going to say that because I don't know if anybody can live up to Jackie Chan, but in a way, he's almost like that. And so, yeah, I just thought his performance was great. But even with Michelle Yao's character, there was a lot of unique things like all her comedy bits with Kiyoi Kwan and reacting like, no, stop, stop, stop coming here. Like, and, and all those things with, like, Rakakui and Rakakuni and, uh, and, uh, I always give him a couple of she and he, and it's always one word, he. Like, all that stuff was just great, but her performance is pretty remarkable. And I was so happy that she won, um, b Best Lead Actress last year, so. Pretty much these were the only performances that I thought were great. James Hong in here was pretty good, too. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis was good, but I liked the other performances in the other movie better, but yeah, this, the two main performances that did win, besides Jamie Lee Curtis, they're all really great and they're fun. And the final thing we'll talk about here is the usage of multiverse. You gotta know, you gotta remember, around this time, we were in a, we were in a, an era since 2021 of just non-stop multiverse palooza it and this sort of started with what if where we got the set the taste of the multiverse we're seeing all these different mcu universes then it continued with spider-man no way home and of course that was a, a massive successful film and then we get this movie and then we get this film it's great we get two months later, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and that for me was a good film at the time, but over time it has become a huge flop in production. And then we get last year with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and The Flash, or even like a couple, five, six years before 
any of these movies came out, we had Into the Spider-Verse, which before, before, uh, everything, ever all at once was even the best multiverse movie, Into the Spider-Verse was the best multiverse movie. But as a live action one, this might be the best multiverse movie I've seen. Besides No Way Home. I would say No Way Home is my favorite, but technically, but the way that, but the reason why it's known to be the best multiverse movie is what they're able to do with the multiverse. That you're not using magical portals, you're not using magic tech where you glitch. You're tr going to universes through mind. You, ha you have this mind device where you can just click and your mind transports you to to that version of you in that universe. And the way that they came up with that was so unique, but seeing all these different universes where like you have to do something weird in order to get a superpower and a special skill. That's so interesting. Even all these different universes were like one universe is a rock. One universe is instead of Ratatouille, it's Rakakuni. And you have a, a universe where you have sausage for fingers. That's so weird, but it's so interesting, and I love it. So yeah, I think the usage of the multiverse in this movie is great. But that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.